Hello and welcome to this film which is all about protein structure and hopefully by the end of it you'll know the difference between the primary, secondary and tertiary structure of proteins. Now hopefully by now, because you've done some work on organic chemistry, you know that we can join amino acids together to make very long chains called polypeptides and that these polypeptides are basically protein molecules if they're big enough. Okay, so what we're going to have a look at in this film is why it is that we have to talk about the structure of proteins in slightly different terms to those reserved for, I suppose, what you could call normal molecules, or certainly small molecules. Okay, So if I asked you to talk about the structure of ethane, you could tell me about the number of carbon atoms and how they're bonded and so on. If I asked you to tell me about the structure of a protein molecule, then you've got a much bigger job on your hands because proteins usually have thousands of atoms, atoms in them. So if we look at this anti-HIV antibody here, you can see if I asked you, tell me about its structure, I suppose you could kind of say, well, where would I start? And what we'll do in this film is we'll see that if we break this down into slightly more manageable chunks, then we've got a chance of talking about this structure without it becoming a ridiculously big job. Now, we're not going to talk about these things in a great deal of detail because there's a film about each one of them coming up. But first we'll have a look at the primary structure of a protein, which in simple terms basically tells us about the order in which amino acids are joined together in a protein. Okay, so the, pro the primary structure is the forces or bonds that cause amino acids to join together in a peptide chain. Now we should know that they're called amide bonds or peptide bonds by now. Okay, but if someone's asking about the primary structure of a protein, they're basically talking about these bonds and the order in which amino acids join together. Next, we could talk about the secondary structure of a protein. Okay, and this is when you've got a polypeptide chain with all your amino acids joined together and the way that parts of that cha chain can interact with each other. And specifically, the hydrogen bonding that occurs between the amide groups in that chain. So it's the forces and bonds that lead to segments of a polypeptide orienting into a regular pattern. But these are specifically the hydrogen bonds between amide groups. Okay, and you can see here that this gives rise to things called alpha helixes and to pleated sheets. But as I say, we'll look at these in more detail later. The tertiary structure of a protein, that now we're looking at the overall three-dimensional shape of the molecule. Okay, so the forces and bonds that lead to the overall 3D structure of the protein molecule. And there's lots of different kinds. And once again, we'll look at these in more detail in the film about tertiary structure. But the key thing here is that rather than these being interactions between the amide groups, these are interactions between the side chains, so the R groups, of the amino acid molecules. Okay, so um, actually, first of all, let's just say something about quaternary structure. If you've done some reading on this topic, you might have come across this. It's not something that's covered in the waste course, so we're not going to worry about it in this film. Anyway, what we were trying to achieve by the end of this film was some understanding of what we mean by primary, secondary and tertiary structure. We're going into these things in more detail. So if you're wondering about these things, then maybe watch the next few films first. But if anything here didn't make sense or if you've got any questions or comments, then please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.